Hi, FBLA PBL members. I am Kimberly Clark, the 2017-2018 PBL National President from Missouri. Former U.S. President John Quincy Adams once said, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. We are so excited to continue this exciting new alumni interview series to bring you tips and advice and stories from former members who proved that they are leaders who have the ability to inspire others with their actions and their careers. Today, we're so excited to be here with Mr. Ron Pierce, the owner, the owner and CEO of RSA Consulting Group and the former PBL National President from Florida. Thank you so much for being with us today, Mr. Pierce. Kimberly, thank you, thank you so much for the opportunity. I look forward to the interview with you. Perfect. So we'll just go ahead and jump into the questions. And the first one that I have for you is, what was your experience in FBLA PBL like, and what inspired you to join PBL and run for national president? And that's a great question because I promise you, when I when I got involved in the organization, um, I would have never dreamed that I was going to run for national president. Um, I was involved in FBLA. I was involved in um, PBL, and I started off as a as a as a chapter officer. I think my first position in the organization was chapter historian, and um, I had an advisor that saw the shy guy in the back of the room that um, he saw some you know, potential in and um, encouraged me to run for office. And um, I ran for um, district office and I ran for state office, became state president. And my experience was really at the state level and working as a leader on the state team in Florida, um, on the PBL team, really gave me the opportunity to grow as a leader. And I really wanted to take that experience onto the national level. And so I ran for Southern region, had the opportunity to serve as Southern Region National Vice President, and then had the honor of serving as National President in 96, 97. What were some of your highlight opportunities that you experienced during PBL that you maybe didn't experience as an FBLA member? I think the biggest one is, you know, the entire purpose of the organization is to help with that transition from school to work. And obviously from, a, from an FBLA standpoint, you're making that transition from high school into college. And I think what PBL really allows you to do is help with that transition from college into the workforce. And so um, I think my experience is from a leadership standpoint, the opportunity to travel, um, the opportunity to get some internships. Um, I think those were amazing experiences that without being involved in PBL, those experiences would, not, would, would have never happened. And really from a public speaking standpoint, from a presentation standpoint, having the opportunity, especially as a national officer and a state officer, to travel around and talk to other PBL members and give presentations and encouraging people to get involved. The skill sets I was building then as a leader have paid huge dividends you know, for me in my professional life. What would you tell some FBLA members who may be watching today to encourage them to continue on into PBL? I would tell them that FBLA is only part of the journey. I think, you know, PBL provides so many additional opportunities. Um, obviously, competitive events is a big part of FBLA. We have, you know, competitions from a PBL standpoint. I truly believe from a PBL standpoint, really helping with that transition from school into the actual workplace, providing opportunities to interact with business leaders, the opportunity to interact with internships is getting involved at that level. Look. I hire people, um, you know, we have, um, you know, in, in, in when I'm looking at somebody's resume, obviously their grades are important, but one of the things I really look at as well is what did they do outside the classroom? And one of the things you do outside the classroom is provide leadership opportunities. And one of the greatest things I think that PBL has the opportunity to do is provide students these leadership opportunities that will help build a resume for future success. Perfect. I couldn't agree more with that. I definitely uh, believe what you said is definitely one of the, the strongest uh, points that PBL does have to offer our members. So how has being a member of FBLA PBL impacted your life and how did the skills and experiences you obtained through the organization help you get where you are currently in your professional career? Kimberly, I tell people all the time, anytime I talk to at the FBLA Leadership Conference or the PBL Leadership Conference here in Florida, I tell them all the time that my, my 
in my professional life, my success in my professional life is directly linked to my, my experiences within the organization. If I was not involved in FBLA and I was not involved in PBL, I promise you today, I would not be sitting here as the president and CEO of a company, um, have offices in, you know, in Tallahassee and in Tampa, um, you know, involved in two or three businesses with other partners. Those successes don't happen without the experiences I built within um, PBL in FBLA at the state level and at the, at the, at the national level as well. Perfect. So before we jump in and talk about what you do today, I'm curious uh, to know what was your dream job when you were a kid? That is a great question. Um, believe it or not, probably to become an elected official. And I've had opportunities to run for office. I took a little bit of a different path doing government relations and on my own lobbying firm. But, um, you know, I was very involved, especially um, you know, looking at campaigns from a distance, especially getting involved in student organizations where you ran campaigns. Um, I've always loved the campaign aspect of it. I thought I would have the chance to run or would run at some point. And, um, you know, again, that's kind of just, it's taken me a little bit of a different path, but probably being an elected official would have been my dream job. Perfect. So what does RSA Consulting Group specialize in and what are some of the day-to-day -day activities that uh, we could find you doing each day? That's a great question. So we do government and community relations for a number of different companies that are based um, a lot in Florida, some national based companies as well. Uh, we represent companies such as Uber, um, Barnes and Noble, the Tampa Bay Lightning, uh, Moffitt Cancer Center, um, a couple of major hospital chains that are based here in Florida. And basically what companies hire us to do is they hire us for two reasons. Number one, they hire us because of our knowledge of the legislative process in Tallahassee. We do mostly state work a little bit of federal work, but mostly state and local government. Um, and they also hire us because of the relationships in the process. So our typical day is spending a lot of time dealing with elected officials, dealing with government staff and agencies, and basically sharing with them either concerns or issues that our clients may have um, with local, state, and sometimes federal government. So how did you get into the world of political consulting? So I worked for a number of elected officials. So when I graduated from college, I was done being um, PBL national president. I started working for some campaigns. That campaign experience allowed me the opportunity to go work for um, some elected officials. I spent um, nearly eight years working for elected officials at the, for the Florida legislature. Um, spent six years working in the Florida Senate specifically. Those opportunities led to an opportunity to go to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, Spent six, um, spent um, three years at the Tampa Bay Lightning, and then that experience um, of working for a professional sports team. And Kimberly, I'm not going to lie to you, doing government relations or working for a professional sports team was a dream job. So if you go back to your question earlier, that was a really cool job to have. But um, I, one thing I noticed along the way is I just had the opportunity to um, start my own business, get involved, and I think everybody's kind of you know dream at some point is owning their own business. Well, it was a very scary step for, step for me to do. I realized I had a lot of relationships, had a lot of knowledge of the process, and that um, leaving the lightning and starting my own business in you know 2009 was a um, was a great opportunity for me. But really, you know, getting involved in this campaign kind of led me to get involved in politics. And as I tell people all the time, you know, dealing with elected officials and dealing with the government process and the public policy process in general, I kind of have a unique skill set to be able to do that from through my experiences. So what is the most rewarding aspect of your position and maybe the most exciting opportunity you've had as oh, um, through owning your own consulting firm? Um, I think number one, I, I think there's two ways to answer that question. I think number one, the opportunity to get involved with clients and issues that have an impact in our community. So getting involved with the Moffitt Cancer Centers, getting involved with community health centers, which, which provide healthcare for um, indigent healthcare folks or low-income Floridians here in, in the state, in the Tampa Bay area. Um, I think getting involved in, in making an impact on those type of issues, and I'll give you one example. So we, we were able to, a couple years ago, um, help with an appropriations project for a group called the Brain and Sports and Aquatic Center. And what they do is they provide, um, they do swim lessons for um, toddlers here at the Tampa Bay area. 
One of them to realize that there was a number of people that were coming from Title I schools from low-income families that were drowning. And so they were trying to figure out a way is how could they work with these Title I schools. And so we actually worked with Hillsborough County here in the Tampa Bay area to come up with an appropriation and build another pool at the Brandon Sports and Aquatic Center. And really the main focus of that pool is learn to swim programs to ensure that um, you know, you know, everybody has the opportunity to learn to swim so they're not falling into a swimming pool and unfortunately drowning. And I tell my team all the time, Kimberly, what's great about that project was I promise you, because us getting involved, working with the not-for-profit, working with the government agency on making it happen, we, we saved somebody's life. We don't know who it is, but there's some kid that's walking around the day that knows how to swim that would have had that opportunity if we weren't involved. And I think the other way to answer it is, you know, from owning your own businesses, you know, having the opportunity to hire other people and mentor them and grow them as leaders. Um, I've been very fortunate. I have a fantastic team at RSA Consulting Group. I've been very blessed with the people that I've surrounded myself with and having the opportunity to bring them in and mentor them and grow them as leaders. Um, you know, that's been an incredible experience for me um, as a leader and, as, and as, as a professional. So on the flip side of that, what would you say would be the biggest challenge of your current position? I have zero work-life balance. <laughs> um, I'm a, um, I'm, I will tell you I am a workaholic and um, I work a lot. I have, um, you know, I do a lot of travel because of my job. So sometimes the downside is, is that, you know, I miss, you know, um, opportunities with my family from time to time. But um, you know, my wife's a saint and um, my son has grown up with me traveling. So I think he's used to it at some level, but, um, you know, owning your own business and especially being somebody that travels back and forth to Tallahassee, which is about a four hour drive from, from Tampa, by the way, um, it can be very, very demanding. And so working on work life balance and working on, um, making sure from, a, from a priority standpoint that uh, my prayer, I'm, I'm very busy between running the businesses I coach my son's travel baseball team with a couple of other coaches. Um, I'm, a, I'm actually teaching right now at USF. I'm teaching a government class there at USF. And so um, I think one of the challenges is just work-life balance. So as far as your consulting firm, um, am I correct when uh, I assume that a lot of what you do kind of deals with lobbying and helping your clients to um, – make their needs known to the government and then um, also in helping them comply with regulations? Absolutely. So, and I'll give you a snapshot. You asked earlier, kind of like, what, what is a typical day? A typical day may be, I was in Tallahassee, you know, Monday through Thursday this week. I came back last night. The typical day for me is probably um, Tuesday. I probably had 20 to 25 meetings at the Capitol with either elected officials or staff. And all of those meetings revolve around either sharing concerns about a piece of legislation that's moving, talking about appropriations for a specific client. You know, this week I worked on issues that dealt with issues, issues relating to issues for Uber, issues relating to PSTA, which is the transit authority on kind of the bus service in Pinellas County, which is just south of Tampa. Um, I worked on issues this week dealing with a group called Community Champions dealing with how subpoenas are done for um, different issues relating to um, crimes committed on the internet. Um, this week we dealt with issues from for community health centers, for hospitals, transportation issues. Probably the funnest thing about my job is I deal with just so many different issues. So I don't have like my days are never are never the same. But you nailed it exactly. What I do is people hire me to be their voice and to um, help them with issues before either city government, county government, or state government. So uh, one of the last questions I have for you is, what advice would you give to FBLA PBL members who are seeking a career in government or politics in some form, um, either as an elected official or uh, as um, a lobbyist or a consultant or something dealing with that world? Get involved and get engaged. If, if number one, I tell students all the time that this is your, this is your democracy, this is your government. So number one, become active, be, an, be a voter, go out and vote. I mean, it, it, first and foremost, at, at a minimum, do that. Um, beyond that, and I'll, I'll talk about, so we, I'm teaching an, um, an internship class right now at the University of South Florida. 
and at USF, the, the class is I've got 10 interns at the local level dealing, they're interning with local elected officials, and I've got six interns that are actually based in Tallahassee for the legislative session in Tallahassee right now. And, you know, it's ironic, you know, it's, what I find it, it's very interesting is a lot of those people that are, that are the one experience in the process, they're not political science majors. There are, I have some business majors, I've got some healthcare majors, I've got some environmental majors, but no matter what you're going to go into, public policy is going to impact that. And so if you want to, especially if you really want to get involved in the political process, get involved in political campaigns. There are all kinds of voluntary opportunities there. You can volunteer, you can work on campaigns, get an inter internship with your local elected official. It could be a city council member, it could be a county commissioner, your state house member, your state senator, your congr your congressman or woman. Work with you, know, work with, create those opportunities. I can promise you, if you live in their district and you tell them that I'm interested, I want to get engaged in the process, I want to volunteer, I want to learn more, um, those opportunities will, will be there for you. And probably the biggest thing, especially if you get involved in this process, the political process is build relationships. And anything that you do, Relationships are so important, but I can promise you relationships in the in the public policy process are absolutely critical to your success. And so um, it's a great opportunity to network, meet people. There's a lot of talented people that work in the public pro policy arena. And a lot of them are looking for mentor opportunities. They want to be able to mentor young folks. Um, we have a number of interns that come through our office. And the reason we do that is, is look, if I look back upon my success, um, especially in the political process, there was people that were there that helped me along the way. And so I want to provide those opportunities um, through my office to give, you know, young students and young leaders the opportunity um, as they move up um, into the professional world, the opportunity to be a mentor and give them experiences as well. Perfect. And the last question I have for you is what advice would you give to an FBLA PBL member who is seeking a business related career, but is completely unsure of what they want to do or what steps, what steps to take, but knows that they do want to make an impact down the line in the future? I, I think a couple of ways to answer that question. I think number one, um, internships are a great opportunity to, to get engaged in companies or in, in different industries that you may or may not, you, you may not know what you want to do yet. So get involved. If you want to work for an accounting firm or a management firm or engineering firm, you don't know what it is yet. Look at an internship, internship opportunity to give you those, um, give you those opportunities. Um, and second, I think, um, I think if you look at, you don't need to rush into your major. So make sure that whatever you're studying, if you want to go into business at some sort, is I think one of the ways that PBL can help you get prepared for that is all the leadership opportunities that we provide. And so as you're kind of building, you know, if you know you want to go into business, you're not sure exactly what you want to do yet, I think the biggest thing that PBL provides the opportunity for you to do an FBLA as well is it provides you the opportunity to get engaged, build your resume, build your leadership skills and so no matter what you're going to go into if it's business if it's if it's public policy or politics it gives you the opportunity to ultimately be, su be successful and and let me close this this question with this is and i said this earlier i can promise you all the skill sets i build up over my fbla and pbl career have paid huge dividends for me as a leader you know, I can speak now to groups and do workshops and, you know, talk before elected officials. And that skill set was really, you know, refined. I was able to sharpen it during my time as a state and, and as a national officer. Because, you know, if you went back and looked at me at a, as a freshman in my accounting class at um, Manatee Community College, and, um, you know, the person that stood up and had to give a speech that could, um, you know, that hated public speaking, didn't want to get involved, was fine with sitting in the back of the classroom, but, um, you know, the experiences that, you know, I build over, you know, my time in the organization. Um, and I think that's what students need to do as well. As you're trying to figure out, figure out what you want to do is use the organization to provide those opportunities. And here's the unique thing about opportunities, though, for all the students who are going to watch this is take full advantage of those opportunities. If you kind of get engaged and you're not getting involved in internships, you're not running for local or, you know, state offices in FBLA or PBL, you're really missing that opportunity. So I encourage them to get involved, get involved in community service pro projects and find something you're passionate about. 
at the end of the day, no matter what you're going to do, find something that you want that you want to do and you want to get engaged with. Thank you so much, Mr. Pierce, for uh, your insights on uh, what you do and your wonderful advice that definitely has inspired me and hopefully has inspired all of the members watching this video today. Kimberly, thank you so much for the opportunity. I wish you and all the members the best of luck and hopefully I'll see, um, see some of you at the um, FBLA and PBL National Leadership Conferences later this summer. Perfect. Thank you. To Thank all you. of the FLA and PBL members who are watching this video today, I hope that this interview series is providing you with some tips that help you as you go through your FBLA and PBL career. And until the end of the membership year, I hope that you are doing everything to elevate your future. And I can't wait to see you at the National Leadership Conference.